Hello everyone, happy Christmas and a very warm welcome to our Christmas Day service. Every Christmas, amidst all the hustle and bustle, we think again about the true meaning of the day. And this year is no exception. We have commissioned Ross McCrory to write a special Christmas drama. And as we have a very new church baby, born just three weeks ago, she is starring in her first role as the baby Jesus. First, we have a carol, Joy to the World, and then Anna will read to us, then a drama written by Ross, and then Sylvia will lead us in our prayers. We'll finish with a prayer and a blessing, and before that, hark the herald angels sing. So now let's begin with an opening prayer. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time, to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Anna is going to read to us from John 1, 1 to 14. The reading today is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. But without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. 
the word became flesh and lived for a while among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, John. Merry Christmas. What are you doing to celebrate today then? Aha! The big Christmas lunch. Turkey, sprouts, all the trimmings, you know. How lovely. I must say the nativity scene looks nice this year, don't you think? I suppose so, yes. Although I don't think I'd like to be a figure in the nativity scene. Why not? Well, most of the year it must feel like a vacuum cleaner. How do you mean? You know, collecting dust. Oh, I see. Very funny. Open the crackers early this year, did you? But you know what I mean. We keep the nativity out over Christmas and then we just put it away again. Actually, I must say I'm quite grateful for that. Ah, you're glad to see the back of all the festive hustle and bustle? Well, y yes. But I mean that once Christmas is over, it's good that we can just put the baby Jesus away and forget about him for another year. Sorry? Well, we've done our bit then, haven't we? Stick him back in the vestry cupboard and we'll move on with our lives. Thank you very much. But you can't mean that. Well, it's only a tradition, isn't it? Just once a year. But you come to church, you sing carols. I mean, not very well, but you sing them. Aye! Sorry. Seriously, though, tell me, what do you mean? Well, it isn't that I don't know the stories, but, well, you just mentioned all the hustle and bustle. Isn't it easier just to keep Jesus just for Christmas? I see. It can be difficult to keep remembering the true meaning of Christmas in the middle of our lives, can't it? Yes, exactly. John, what's your favourite Christmas carol? It's, um... Uh, joy to the world? Why? Let every heart prepare him room, John. We must let Jesus into our hearts and we must keep him in our hearts the whole year. That's a nice message, but I don't know if... You feel like a busy innkeeper, don't you, John? I feel like a what? Like one of the innkeepers in the Christmas story. You don't feel like there's room for Jesus. That's it. I don't. I... If he can stay in a stable, he can make do with even the smallest place in our hearts. He'll work the rest out from there. But we have to do our best to remember him. The meaning of Christmas is the Christmas things you do the whole year round. There's an old song about that somewhere as well. Well, it's another nice message, Gabriel. But I don't know if I can. I mean, the whole year? That sounds like a lot of hard work. And surely it means lots of rules to follow and guilt and... Not at all, John. Do not be afraid. I tell you what, think of it like this. If a good friend turned up to your house unexpectedly on Christmas Day, you wouldn't turn him away, would you? Well, maybe. No, probably not, no. Why not? Well, because it wouldn't really be a problem. As long as it had a lateral flow test, I suppose it would actually make the whole day better. Exactly. And that's how it is with Jesus. He came to make the whole world better. And just like a good friend, he can help us make better people when we let him. And are you saying Jesus, Jesus is like my friend? Of course. He is your friend, John. Remember what else that carol of yours says about him ruling the world with truth and grace and bringing peace. That's what keeping Jesus with us all year is about. Not following rules, following him. Not feeling guilty about being forgiven when we go wrong. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to keep trying. God loves us, regardless and always. It really does mean joy to the whole world. Gabrielle... <laughs> You've explained it all so clearly. The meaning's coming back to me now. But what can I actually do to keep Jesus in my life the whole year? Think of all the other characters in the nativity. 
Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, and don't forget baby Jesus himself, they all give us examples of how we can become what God knows we can be. And that's not the end of Jesus' story, just the beginning in fact. His story gives us lots of stars to guide us on our way. Of course it does. How wonderful. So the nativity scene reminds us of Jesus coming to earth and gives us a clue to everything that means for us. Yes, indeed. And it reminds us to let him in when he knocks on the door of our lives today and to keep him there. You're right again. So what you're really saying is, when we've put the figures away, the nativity's not just for Christmas. John, I think you've got it. That's amazing. Thank you, Gabrielle. I hadn't thought of it all that way for a long time. And really, we'll try to keep Jesus in my life all year from now on. I'll do good things for Jesus by trying to be kind to everyone I meet. Fantastic, John. What a New Year's resolution. I reckon I'll think about this conversation every time I look at the nativity scene now. And I'll make sure I really look at it. Perhaps each time I'll understand a little more. Do you know, the faces on this one suddenly look less wooden. More real. I know just what you mean. Right. Well, I'd better get home and put the sprouts on. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, John? Yes, Gabrielle? On the subject of being kind and letting an unexpected friend sit around the Christmas table, you know, one who can help you make the day better. I'll see you at three. Thank you, John. See you then. Merry Christmas. No, thank you. Merry Christmas. Remember, do not be afraid. It's all good news. Honestly, Gabrielle, that way you've helped me today. Anyone would think you are you were... Anyway... Got to fly now, John. I'll see you this afternoon. Well, I wonder. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the news of your son's birth came to wealthy, educated, wise men and to the poor, hard-working shepherds. No one was missed out. We pray that that same message of forgiveness, fullness of life in your kingdom, will still be heard this Christmas across the world. May your church, stirred by your spirit, be bold in telling the message and showing it by lives of generosity to all. Both the wise men and the shepherds received the good news in the dark of night. Dear God, we pray that all who are in darkness of mind and spirit will find your light of everlasting love and truth. And we pray that those who tell the good news will be inspired and protected as they pass the light on to those who seek it. Heavenly Father, you chose Mary and Joseph to be Jesus' human family. We pray for parents and children today. We bring to you those who are struggling to give the healthy and loving home life their children need, whose stress, financial difficulties, relationship problems make for a home of anxiety, anger or hurt instead of love and nurturing. God of peace, We pray your blessing and restoring for them today and in the coming weeks and months. Many of us will celebrate today with lovely food and company. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who will not have that joy. There are many who go hungry today and every day. We plead forgiveness for our lack of sharing so that all can eat. Be the inspiration and the energy for those who are busy in food banks and food centres and soup runs, in delivering humanitarian aid and helping to plan longer term self-sufficiency projects. We ask, knowing your Father's love for all your children everywhere. 
Heavenly Father, we meet together today as your children seeking your blessing for the days ahead. We bring to you those who need you especially today through illness or grief, anxiety or doubt. May they know your presence, easing their hurts of body and mind, giving guidance and peace for the days ahead. And may we all know afresh your wonderful gift of Jesus, our Redeemer, Emmanuel, God with us, as we go from here to live out each day for you. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Now let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you now to Anna and to Ross, to Charlie, Heather and little baby Aurora, to Alexia Miranda for the drama and Sylvia for the prayers.
Thank you, Sue, for the music choice and to Chrissy putting the service together online. Thank you all so much for joining in with our Christmas worship. Now, a final prayer and then a blessing. God, our Father, whose word has come upon us to, in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. So now a blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those who you love and pray for, today and always. Amen. And again, Happy Christmas.